Hey guys, welcome to me reacting to Spongebob Conspiracy Number 2, The Television Theory by Alex Bale. Now, I reacted to the first theory, which was about Squilliam Tentacles and how he's a fraud. Now, I didn't really think that theory was great. I feel like a lot of things could have easily debunked it. But this theory I've heard is really, really good. And I've also heard that the next one is absolutely insane. So I am planning on reacting to the Mrs. Puff theory next, but I've heard this one is also really insane. This one's really good too. So yeah, I'm honestly a little bit excited for this one. But yeah, anyways, guys, reach in the description, make sure to Alex Bailing, so some chips and notes. Let's get right into it. The show SpongeBob SquarePants is not what you think it is. There is a secret group of puppet masters who are always watching the citizens of Bikini Bottom and pulling the strings. Hidden within Bikini Bottom are spies that keep an eye on the characters and make sure everything goes to plan. Oh, this is what? a conspiracy that will fundamentally change the way you look at the show SpongeBob SquarePants. And I believe it's all actually intended by the creators. And I'm gonna prove it. And I'm this gonna is it. the television theory. Okay, I'm interested already. Oh. You guys had a great reaction to my Squilliam Fancyson theory, and I had a lot of fun making it. Squilliam, you lying, oh. deceiving bastard! I didn't even realize that. But trust me when I say that what I've discovered this okay. time is much, much bigger. To start this theory, we have to go back. To Didn't the know he actually allowed the reaction first videos. Episode of SpongeBob SquarePants. Good to see that. Uh, so fascinating, so wonderful. Here we see Bikini Bottom teeming with life. Mmm, the narrator. Evil creatures. SpongeBob SquarePants. Yes, of course he lives in a pineapple, you silly. So let me ask you a question. Who's speaking in this? Yeah. Movie? Well, obviously that's just the narrator. We hear his voice many times. Yeah. Ah, uh, Goo. Goo Lagoon. Ace and then also two hours lagoon. later, right? The title cards. Uh, the classy class. The two are, uh, the title cards. Has all the many kinds of undersea life. Pops Boating School. Where diligent students learn the rules of the road. But, who exactly is... The narrator? narrator? Well, he's just the narrator, right? We're not supposed to think about who he is or why we're hearing him. Lots of shows have narrator framing devices we're not supposed to think about. Caillou was amazing. Oh, God, don't bring him. Bingo. Yeah, Caillou. Just like in the picture. But... There's something different about this narrator. He sounds a lot like he's narrating a nature documentary. The ocean. From above, a simple blanket of water. Oh! Below, complex oh! So is that what this theory is about? That it's actually a nature documentary? Cause... Alex, uh, wait. Cause... Wait. S Stephen Hellingberg, who is it? Who? Who was I gonna say? Uh, yeah, who was I gonna say before? But yeah, Stephen Hellingberg was originally a marine biologist. So that would actually make a lot of sense if that's what he's saying, that this is a, you know, a documentary about marine biology. Life and wonder. Ah, the sea. So fascinating. So wonderful. Here we see Bikini Bottom teeming with life. What if I told you that he's not just some random disembodied voice? He's an actual character in this universe. Here we are oh, yeah. at the Bikini Bottom Boating School. Today is once again the day of SpongeBob's Boating School exam. Yeah, wait! He crashes into him! Test for the year. But that could be a joke, but like. One. It means another whole year of boating school! Yeah, wait, it is shown that he's a guy. Yeah, with. Spongebob literally crashes into the fourth wall, and we actually get to see the narrator and the camera he's been filming with. The show Spongebob True. is not just a cartoon. I forgot Every about that. It's part of a nature documentary television show. Yeah, so I was right. Scuba divers. And if you're still not convinced, I searched really, really hard and found an old Spongebob DVD bonus feature that basically confirms everything. Since before time even existed, land-loving scientists have tried to learn the secrets of intelligence. Their studies led them to the sea, where the citizens of one undersea colony demonstrated a genius so enormous, oh. scientists felt compelled to record their actions for use in teaching mankind how to live better. The name of this miraculous place? Bikini Bottom. Poring over the mass of brainy masterminds scattered about this strange land, the scientists chose six Bikini Bottom residents at random to study. As the scientists marveled at the advanced knowledge and superior intellect of these the six physics creatures, of fun. I went 
to college. They rolled their cameras and took notes. And now, finally, we can learn all of the things that these smarty pantses have to teach us. Life lessons from Bikini Bottom. I don't know how okay. to that. Now, if you rewatch the show with this new information in mind, some things start to take on a whole new meaning. Throughout the series, there's this weird, unexplained. Oh, yeah, the hand! Human hand interfering with the characters. It's even in the beginning of every episode in the intro for the show. Maybe the filmmakers are doing a bit more than just studying these characters. The hand seems to mostly interfere just to maintain the health and safety of the characters, like treating SpongeBob for the suds. Well, Mr. SquarePants, it seems you have the suds. Are you ready for your treatment? Oh, Hans! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and then it goes into this scene. It makes sense that the filmmakers wouldn't want to risk the safety of their main character. After all, there's no show without SpongeBob, but that's not the only reason why they interfere. Season 3, episode 16, I Had an Accident, is infamous for having one of the most absurd, confusing endings in the entire show. It ends with a real gorilla suddenly coming oh, out yeah! and attacking the characters. This episode! Yeah, what? And then, yeah, he says at the end that they're onto us. begins to question the logic of the scene, this happens. What's a gorilla doing underwater in the first place? Huh? Well, well it, it's funny you should yeah. I mean, see the George, George they're on to us. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Yeah. Yeah, it's like what? Oh yeah, that does happen in the episode. SpongeBob is a weird show, but this has always stuck out as being just a little too weird. But knowing what we know now, I think I can explain what's going on here. This isn't a real gorilla. Every other land animal we've seen underwater wears a helmet and is drawn in a cartoony style. The gorilla is shown in a live action style, and the only time we ever see live action characters is when they're human. So I believe both the gorilla and the horse he rides away on are humans wearing costumes. The filmmakers set this whole thing up just to make the episode more entertaining. It's starting to seem like this isn't strictly a nature documentary oh, what? anymore. It's more of a reality TV show made for entertainment. Who knows what other absurd elements of the show are actually put there by the filmmakers to make the show more entertaining and profitable. Ooh, interesting! Some people's reaction, it doesn't always seem to pay off. But how far will the filmmakers go to make the show more profitable? Ah... Uh. Saturday morning in Bikini Bottom. That's an interesting theory. His favorite Saturday morning show, The Adventures of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Enjoying a bowl of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy bland cereal. And wearing the official Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy breakfast bikers. If we think of this as a television show, this sounds an awful lot like a product placement. I mean, listen to how the narrator specifically says the full names of the products. The Adventures of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy bland cereal. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy breakfast bikers. Why don't you let me fix you some of this Nemo cocoa drink? All natural cocoa Hey, I like the Truman Show there. Who are you talking to? Maybe the Mermaid Man and Barnacle The use of the Truman Show is good. That's good. Human, after all. It makes sense that the filmmakers would choose to highlight these popular superhero characters. The more they show, the more they're gonna sell Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy merchandise. Hang on a second, why are Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy the same size as all the fish in Bikini Bottom, even though humans are always shown as massive compared to fish? Uh, wh whatever, I'll, I'll come back to that one later. The show doesn't even just hide product placements. In the episode Model Sponge, they literally trick SpongeBob into making a commercial for a human product. Oh. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. Director. Very well. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hans! Hans! There's my star! What's happening? What's happening? In this I guess copyright, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's a way for a cleaning utensil. Don't you get it? You are the cleaning utensil. <laughs> oh no, your bathroom is a disaster. Get it cleaned up fast with the new sponge. <laughs> Household chores are a snap with new sponge. It cleans sinks. <laughs> Just look 
Did that shine? This is just like in real life how Spongebob is such a popular character that he's used to sell tons and tons of products. So far I've shown you that the show Spongebob Squarepants is actually a documentary television show. Yeah, that's interesting. But the creators continually interfere to push their own agendas and make more money. But that brings us to an important question. Do the characters know they're in a television show? Let's go back to that clip where Spongebob hits the cameraman. It means another whole year of boarding school! Aww. What happened? Oh, nothing, Spongebob. You just struck another pedestrian. Mrs. Puff calls him a pedestrian, which sounds more like she thinks he's just some random bikini bottom citizen. The different types of marine life in Spongebob are so diverse and weird looking that it's not too hard to believe that the characters just think these filmmakers are another weird type of fish. And back to the gorilla episode, the gorilla and the horse immediately get nervous and run away when Spongebob questions what's going on. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Uh, well, it's funny you should, I mean, see the, the George, they're onto us! <laughs> Let's get out of here. Almost like the creators don't want the characters to be aware their lives are being interfered with. Now, there isn't a ton of footage of the characters interacting with the filmmakers, but I dug really, really deep and found the smoking gun that answers all of our questions. Okay. This is an old commercial from 2004 made to promote the SpongeBob movie. <laughs> SpongeBob. What kind of jellyfish is that? It's not a jellyfish, Patrick. It's a spaceship. <gasps> hey guys, it's Carlos from the Zone. I was wondering if you could answer a few questions. Questions? Run for your lives! No, Pat, don't you see? It wants to learn about our What's world. with the static? Chosen us. What? Yay! Oh, we've been chosen. A submarine comes down to Spongebob and Patrick to ask questions to promote the new movie. Spongebob and Patrick are clearly confused by this and think the submarine is some kind of alien. They also have no idea that they're the stars of a movie. Well, thanks guys. We'll see you in the movie. Bye! Movie? What's that? I don't know. That's, so that's interesting. Point that the characters are unaware their lives are being filmed and interfered with. But there are some characters that have to have some level of awareness. For example, the doctor fish that told the human hand to treat Spongebob, and the director fish that directed the commercial for the human world. What makes these characters so special? First off, the director fish isn't actually from Bikini Bottom. Before he directed this commercial, we saw him as a citizen of New Kelp City in the episode Whatever Happened to Spongebob. Out of all the characters they could have used, they specifically chose a character from out of town. Almost like the filmmakers didn't want to use anyone in Bikini Bottom, so they wouldn't risk it. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Then there's the doctor fish. We don't know where he originally came from, but he's an extremely suspicious character. Usually he's purple, but sometimes he's orange, sometimes he's purple with orange hands, sometimes he's a pirate, and he bears a striking resemblance to Dr. Manowar from the Jellyfish Convention. And now it only hurts when you touch it. <laughs> touch. Why does he have so many different disguises and identities? What is he hiding? I believe hidden throughout Bikini Bottom are spies like this who are aware they're in a television show and keep tabs on the main characters and make sure everything goes to plan. There's so many suspicious- That would actually kind of make sense. That idea would actually kind of make a lot of sense because they're recurring characters. That actually would make sense. This theory so far is very good because there's a lot of actual evidence to prove it. Like- some of it can be debunked by like animation or like they could just be jokes like breaking the fourth wall. But at the same time, the fact that you have actual clips where it's like the way they're promoting SpongeBob is saying like it's marine biology and then also the like gorilla scene with the TV. Uh, that, that is interesting. That's interesting. It's just characters in Bikini Bottom that it could literally be anyone. The mailman, the hot dog vendor, old man Jenkins. It could literally be oh, yeah, old man anyone. Jenkins. But what if I told you that the biggest spy of all isn't some random side character. It's one of the main characters of the show. Someone who's been there from the very beginning. Oh, this leads into theory three, doesn't it? Someone who's not even from the ocean. That's oh, right. oh, Sandy Cheeks. Sandy Oh, I thought this led into Theory 3 with Mrs. Paul, but I guess not. Real -seeking scientific swirl from Texas but yeah, that does make a lot of sense but when you think about it. Bikini bottom? Yeah. In the episode Chimps Ahoy, to study them, she right? was hired by a group of chimpanzees to come underwater and create inventions. But why does she need to be underwater to make inventions? She could have just as easily have made any of her inventions on land. 
It must be extremely expensive to maintain a giant dome of air underwater. There is no way the only reason she's here is to make random inventions. I think this whole episode is an elaborate ruse to throw off the other characters from the real reason Sandy is in Bikini Bottom. To spy on the main characters and make sure the show stays on track. Many of the times the characters are in danger, Sandy conveniently steps in to save the day, and many of the wacky, entertaining episode plots are driven by an invention Sandy creates. Everything she does is a calculated move to carry out- <laughs> Interesting the clip they use. Her entire friendship- That would make sense. The other characters is built on a lie. But you're probably saying, Sandy is a sweet, friendly squirrel. There's no way she's behind this. You're not convinced yet? That's okay. Because what I'm about to show you is so mind blowing, so okay. insanely revealing. Here we go. That's actually the whole reason I decided to make this video. Really? The big one. Season 10, episode 10, Feral Friends, is the episode that unlocks this entire mystery. The music. During a birthday party, a green moon suddenly appears and turns everyone except Sandy into less of a- Oh yeah, this episode! Themselves. Sandy is completely caught off guard by this and decides to call someone for help. And take a guess. Who she, calls. she calls a human. Yeah. She calls this guy. Yeah. Hello, French narrator speaking. Yeah. Hey, Frenchie, it's me, Sandy. With the narrator, oh, yeah. Sandy cheeks. How is it hanging? Oh, it's not hanging too good, Frenchie. You see, there's this. Don't say another word. I have been monitoring the behavior of the green moon all day. Huh, yeah, I guess that's a pretty interesting clip, yeah. That is an interesting clip. Sandy literally calls the narrator to let him know what's going on and asks for instructions on what to do next. She has been working with him the entire time. He even has a picture of her on his desk. Yeah, why is that? This is where I originally planned on ending the video, but there is still one small issue with the television theory. Just one nagging plot hole that contradicts everything. If this is all a television show filmed by scuba divers, then how are we seeing inside the buildings? It's not like any of the humans filming the show could fit inside them. It's the one annoying thing that keeps this theory from being complete. I mean, the most logical explanation is that they have hidden cameras inside of everyone's homes, but we never really see anything like that. Oh! Holy... Season 6, episode Truth is Square, Square, yeah. The SpongeBob 10th anniversary special where they reveal lots of stuff about the characters. But the most damning piece of evidence comes from when the characters get lost in the Krusty Krab vents and end up in a room full of monitors showing live footage of all of their homes. Quality change to the copyright. Oh, my house is on TV. All of our houses are on TV. Gary the Snail, you get down from that bed this instant. Hey, there's my house! Look, yeah. it's Sandy! And who is the character responsible for all of these hidden cameras? Mr. Krabs, why do you have cameras watching us? <laughs> oh, well, uh, uh, I just want to make sure you all floss after every meal. Thank you, Mr. Krabs. Dental hygiene is very, very important. Dental hygiene? Eugene, you lying bastard. <laughs> of course he would sell out his friends for a quick buck. And if there's any part of you that thinks there's some chance Mr. Krabs has all these hidden cameras for some other reason, then take a look at what happens next. Hey, who are those guys? I think it's us, Patrick. But who are they? All right, they're not even trying to hide it anymore. A cameraman and a boom operator have been following around the character oh, yeah, the entire wait. time. And just like the gorilla, as soon as they get seen, they make a run for it. The case is closed. Ooh, true. All right. The television theory is something the show has consistently alluded to from the very yeah, that is true. The newest episodes. Maybe one day the show will actually directly address it and our characters will discover the real truth about their world. But regardless, that's my theory. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more. See you next time. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on a sec. You thought I forgot about the Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy thing, didn't you? Oh, okay. All right, here's a quick bonus theory. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy were two superheroes that fought crime underwater and protected the sea from evil. Okay, so this is like a mini theory? It was all staged for television isn't clear, but they both spent their lives underwater until they became old and retired. But after spending so much time under the sea, they no longer fit in with human society. Plus, Mermaid Man is clearly dealing with some form of dementia and PTSD from fighting evil. But you can't retire. There's evil afoot. What? <laughs> evil.
So, they decided to live the rest of their lives in Bikini Bottom. And in order to fit in better with their fellow sea creatures, they made the permanent decision to shrink themselves using- Oh the yeah, they can shrink, shrink themselves. The case is closed. Yeah, okay. Again. Again. So yeah, honestly, this was actually a pretty good theory. I actually really enjoyed it. There was a lot of evidence to point to the fact that they're being filmed by, you know, marine biologists and they're interfering to make it more interesting and entertaining for people to watch. And they also have people spying on them. For example, Sandy, which interesting. Actually interesting. And there was the mini theory with uh, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, which I guess is cool. So yeah, honestly, honestly a really good theory. This was actually really good. I'm actually very excited for the next one because I've heard that one is insane. And I heard that one is really, really good. So, I'm curious. I'm actually curious of what it is. But, yeah, anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the like, and subscribe to my channel, see you next one. Bye!